Hello friends, this is Donna Cato. Welcome to my channel. This is part four of this series of classes I'm doing on mud cloth canes. Now, this is actually day two of part four because yesterday I made this one and you know what? It's not a very good cane. Furthermore, it's not enough like what I was going for and I will show you what the original looks like. You'll see why I'm on day two. This was what I was trying to replicate. Now I did change it slightly. I got rid of these corners and I added stripes and dots to them instead. Um, but that really is the only change. But really, this is, hello, what was, what was I thinking? This doesn't, this just isn't a good cane. Not if I'm trying to replicate this. And that's why I'm working on it for the second day. Okay, now that doesn't mean that the cane is no good for anything because certainly it's good for something. I took a little piece, I reshaped it, then I made a dragonfly using this cane, this cane, for the wings, and then the cane that we made in, I think it was part three, I just stretched it out, thinned it, and it became quite a nice body for the dragonfly. So by no means is this a wasted cane. It is going to be used for other things. Here's another dragonfly. Here's, a, I don't know what exactly that is, but I used this cane. Okay, so let's talk about what you need or what I'm starting with. I'm gonna start with two, four ounces of copper, straight copper from the package. This is color number one. And color number one was, if you'll recall, two ounces of yellow plus a quarter ounce of copper. And this is actually four ounces. Then I've got white, four ounces. And then I have eight ounces of black. Now, let's look here. I have to make a correction. I'm using straight copper here. Oh, got a little problem. Maybe I have to charge up my pencil. Well, anyway, um, those are the colors we're using. I decided not to use color number two, which was that brown copper mix that we used in part three and part two and part, part one and switched directly to copper because I found a stash of copper I had. So I conditioned it and I softened it with uh, condi my conditioning bar because it was so old and it was so hard. So I did that. And in the process, I also found a stash of ancient black. So I conditioned this up and instead of using the conditioning bar, I just went ahead and used blackout because blackout also softens the clay. All right, so let's begin. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this center area here. This. All right. So I'm going to start by reshaping these, taking them from sheets and rolling them into cylinders and then shaping them into equilateral triangles. So I'll just start with the copper and I'm going to move this down a little toward me. And the challenge for me is always just keeping my hands under the camera. I don't know why that's so hard. Now, I want this to be about two inches. So I'm going to just... Black hands like so. And I will reshape this into an equilateral triangle. So that's the first step in turning an equilateral triangle into an isosceles triangle. Okay, equilateral triangle, three sides are the same. Isosceles, two sides are the same. All right, 
So the first thing I have to do is just flatten like so, flip to the next side and then just lightly push down, push down, push down and just keep flipping from side to side. And what I do is I take my fingers and I push that edge down to my work surface. Okay, so at this point, there's very little activity above this area down where the clay corner, one, the two corners of the triangle meet my work surface. When you're reducing or manipulating triangles, you'd never want to squeeze in this center area because if you squeeze there and you create a pit that runs the length, it's really hard to fill that in. It's hard to get the clay from the center to come back out. Okay, here we go. Just like so. So let's take a look. And that is an equilateral triangle. Now I'm just going to stroke the corners like so, because I would like them to be a little sharper than they are. That's easy enough to do. Just stroke each corner. just to make a sharper corner, which is what we need, okay? So I think that's that's good. Now I will do the second color. I will do this, the color number one, and then I'll be back. So here you see the two triangles. Now what happens is this. Go away. You can see right here. So the first cut is going to be this one. Runs parallel to one side. The second cut is the same thing on the other side. Then cut straight down the middle. Okay. So that's what happens. That's how we make. That's how we transform this triangle into an isosceles triangle with a wedge cut out because remember we need to have a wedge cut out right there and then we put a little white square. Okay, so let's start. And please ignore this part. I'm charging up my Apple Pencil and I will mark this out. We are using straight copper. We're not using the brown copper mix. All right, so let's do it on this one. And what you want to do is you want to do them exactly the same, okay? So to the extent you can. So let me see if I can do it this way. And you know what? I am going to sacrifice a little bit more clay to make a nice straight edge to mark on. be easier to see because we do want to make them the same. As much as possible. They won't be exactly the same. The copper looks to be just a tad smaller. I can correct that by stretching this out a bit. You know what? I guess now would be the time to do it, wouldn't it? Just a bit more. Yeah, the copper is smaller. Close. Unbelievable. Okay, let me just stretch it out. Because they really should be the same size. as much as possible. And that looks 
pretty darn good, so we will stick with that. Now I will cut the excess of the goldy color off, like so. All right. Now I can mark where I'm going to cut. Just use this. Let's say I'm going to cut here. And on this side, I will cut here. Okay. So now at least I have the mark on the copper piece. So I will know. And uh, they will be the same, the same size. Now I'm going to take my blade and I'm just going to start at that mark and lay it like that. Okay. Make a mark. Then repeat on the other side. It's easier to see if I flip this around. Like so. And this, of course, this line runs parallel to the side. Like so. And that's where I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut straight down and straight down. But the best way to cut straight down is, of course, to utilize these drop lines. Okay? So I'm just starting here and straight down to the other side, like so. Repeat, drop it down to the other side, like so. So drop all the lines down to the other side, as straight as you can. And then you connect them on the other face of the triangle, like so. And this is a way you can check to make sure they're correct. If you find something is way off, then you can adjust it on this face and then uh, transfer and drop the lines to the other again. So you have an accurate line to cut down. This looks good to me. So I am just going to take the blade and walk it down using the, you guys are probably sick of me saying, it's Sandra McCaw. The Sandra McCaw walk the blade down through the clay routine. Okay. Now let's keep it together. And walk it down again. Walk the other line down. Now I'm just going to remove this. I could have left it, I suppose. Keep it together like so. All right. And now this time you're going to cut in half again, only the blade will walk along here and then it will walk along just this line right here and right there. Okay, you lay it out. And use a nice sturdy blade, not a flexi blade. Okay, so let's take this apart. And now we're going to put it back together, only we're putting it back together this way. Like so. 
Now it's going to take just a wee bit of work to fill in this space, okay? And generally, I just start by pushing like this, okay? So I'm just compressing everything sideways, both ends, like so, okay? And then we have to close this space up here. Now, that's not too difficult to do. Start by just using your fingers and trying your best just to close it a bit this way. Now, if you start having a little problem with that, then you're going to take something like, oh, this end of a brush and just start pulling the clay over to close it. Like so. And by pressing it flat against my work surface, it's also not going to close up that square cut out or the notch we've cut out. Okay, so just close it like so. And I'm going to kind of try to work on the ends here like so okay now let's get this up off the table want this nice and smooth too. Okay. Now you're going to have to do the same thing to the other side and um, try to make it exactly the same size as this when you're through. So you've seen me do this one, so now I will do the other, and then I will be back. So here are my two pieces. What you want to do is try to make them the same size and the same shape. Uh, my copper clay is a lot more newly than this, uh, this other color. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. I'm not used to that. I am just not used to it, but... Uh, Apparently, I over-softened it, so I'll have to deal with that. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap each of these with a sheet of black. My black, and I'm going to roll it through setting three on my atlas that starts at zero. on there. So let us start. <gasps> noodly, noodly. Very noodly. Overly noodly. Okay, gonna start here. Start with the noodly one. Then, kind of feed it into the space like so. Get it down as far as I can. And then, take a needle tool and push it all the way down into the crevice. 
like so. Okay, now I'm just going to wrap it around. Like this. And I'm going to place it down and trim this edge. And I'm just smoothing this over just a tad. Like so. You know, I probably should. This next one I'm going to start not on a corner, but in a different place. I think it would be easier. I'm going to have to pay attention to you, noodly one. All right, I'm taking my clay and I'm going to wrap the glue. over around the corner, work it in to the crevice, push it down and deeper, continue wrapping around all the way around that corner. And then up along the top, and then trim. And bring them together like so. Okay. Better, 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 better. I can't believe I made the copper so soft. Egads. Okay, so there's a lesson for everyone. You can make the clay too soft with the conditioning bar. I put too much in. Now I'm going to put a white square right there in the middle. Okay, now I believe this is too big. I believe, see, it's too big. It just needs to be a tad smaller. So let me just reduce it a bit. Let me see if that is the size. And you know what? It's still a bit big. Just a tad big. 
So let me just stretch it out. I was conditioning a lot of black clay. Uh, you guys have seen how I work. I am not the most meticulous clayer you've ever seen. I know that's true. Maybe it drives some of you a little nuts. Like, how can that girl do anything? How can her work not be totally contaminated? It's a miracle. Okay, so here we go. Well, one thing that happens in cane work, I'll tell you, even though, you know, you're seeing some contamination, it's a little gray here, by the time the cane is reduced and you're using it for something, you don't see that. Makes sense? You just won't see it. Okay, so right now I'm just going to try to pull the corners out of the copper and this goldy ochre color. I really like that color. Okay. And I'm going to try to bring this to a point. I think that will help. Now that guy looks a little high, so let me see if I can pull that back down a bit. Actually, I'm going to pull it out a little bit because this end actually looks a tiny bit larger. try to be a little more particular. Okay, so yesterday I got lazy. I think I got tired. And as I do these YouTubes, I'm figuring out that there are times when I just definitely need a coffee break. Just need to stop and step away sometimes. Maybe you guys have experienced the same thing. Okay, so that, you know, to me that looks, that's looking good. That is looking good. Okay, now the next challenge, and it's a challenge, is to fill the corners and make a perfect rectangle. When I say perfect, I mean perfect. Okay, let's take a look at my handy-dandy iPad. Um, before I fill the corners, I have to put a white sheet like so. Then I will continue making the stripes. Then we will have to make the polka dots. Okay, so let's do this white line first going to take my white clay. <sighs> Ta-ta. 
and I'm going to make it rather thin. Because as I look at the pattern, it looks like there's a thicker black here, like the black around the outside is equal to the black running through the middle. So actually, I'm going to do that first. which means I need more black clay. So let me do this. Oopsie. Oopsie. So I'm gonna roll it through setting three, which was the same setting that I rolled, that I wrapped those two pieces with. see an air pocket. All right. Oh, do, 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 do. Okay, let me trim this guy. And it's got to be a little long because I've got to go all the way around, of course. Here we go. Cut and let's go all the way around. Ay, ay, ay. Well, it's a good thing polymer clay is one of those not so messy art forms. I'd really be in trouble. Uh-oh. Well, I'll live with it. I would be in so much trouble. And I cut this too. Ugh. I may just have to step away. Now see, here's where this really does need to join. It really does. I could have picked a better spot to cut it too short. But I didn't. Come on, dude. You can do it. time for the white and I think I will make it kind of thin
Santa. I'm going to make it Santa. Okay. I'll try to get some of this black clay off the bottom of my leg. I think I need it thinner. All right, so this is setting three for my pasta machine that starts at zero. I have a lot of Okay. Let's hope that's long enough. Okay, so now I just have to go across one. Huh. I think I am going to see this is where this is my dilemma right now no I'll do four separate pieces but see that very tiny little gap there Okay, tiny gap, tiny gap. So I can start by placing this right there and leaving just a tiny little space on that corner. Okay. Da -da, da -da. And leaving a larger space on the side. Like so. To this side. I'll leave a tiny gap and screw it over. Cut it and leave a slightly larger gap on this side. There's the middle. There's where I'll leave the gap. Hopefully that works. Ooh, I'm feeling air. Come on, get out. Get out. All right, now I'm gonna repeat on the other side and then I'll be back. All right, so the next thing we have to do, or I have to do, is build this striped area. Now we know that whatever this length is, is basically the same as this side. Um, and this is kind of what I figured would work would be to build a slab like this and then angle a cut here and cut down the middle so that this one edge and this edge are equal to the sides 
of the triangles or the sides here, like that. Now, I think, let's measure it. So this is about an inch and three quarters and from the very middle there to, it's about an inch, a little more than an inch. So I'm gonna build something that's an inch tall and two inches wide, okay? With the black and white. And I'll start with the black. And I'm going to make these rather bold stripes. So everything will be rolled through probably setting one or two. Let us take a look. Oops, that's setting three. <laughs> Let's go with one. Okay, let's see. Wait a minute, just a minute. I need it to be two and one half inches. So the stripes have to be two and one half inches by one inch by two inches. Okay, I think I got it straight. Okay, let me just take a nice straight cut. This is going to have to be two and a half inches. Approximately two inches. All right, so the stripes will be running this way. And I will have some to trim, but I'm going to start building stripes this way. And then when I cut, I'll be able to fill the other side too. I hope. Yeah, I should be able to. Or I have to build it twice, which could absolutely happen. Okay, so let me continue. I'm going to build up my slab. Oops. Okay, so I made this slab. You can see that it is bigger than it needs to be. But I was paranoid <laughs> because I made them too small last time. So what I've got, it's long enough. It's big enough. So I'm going to take, and just here along the bottom, I'm going to cut, okay? And I know that this is good. And I'm leaving a little excess there. You know, I can always cut it away. But, boy, I really did not make it big enough last time. So now I'm going to drop the line again. Okay. I'm going to drop the line on this side. You can see I picked up some black clay. Like so. And I'm going to connect the two drop lines. One there one here and I'm going to walk the blade down walking it down oops yeah, this gets kind of actually maybe I can walk it down this way 
on the side like so. Oops, if I can see it. Just take my time. goes oh that looks a little small actually that looks okay if I take it and put it up here that's fine and now all I have to do is cut here now, this guy is a little bit different because now I've got the white against the white on this side. So I have to put a sheet of black underneath. Not a big deal. just want to make sure that I've got black against that white stripe. Against that white right there. Okay, so let's do this again. Let me just measure straight across. So at that corner, and then I will drop the line. Okay, from this corner and that line. I am a bit paranoid about it. So one way or another, there's going to be enough clay. So I think that's why it got so distorted. The pattern got very distorted. Didn't like that at all. Okay. So let's see how that goes. That actually... Doesn't look bad, but see, I've got some space there I'm going to have to fill. Same thing on this side. The two sides look very much the same, so I will put a little bit of black clay right here down the middle. Okay, so let me measure there and cut down right there. Is that going to be good? Yeah, I think if I fill the space in here and the space in there, we're, we're in good shape. So I've marked here, here, and here. So let me cut those, and then I will be back. Okay, so here are these two corners. Now, I ended up with a lot of waste 
a lot of this and I can't separate it because the white and the black are so soft I can't pull them apart. So if you want to avoid this, you can do something that is a little more labor intensive, takes a little more time, but it's just simply to take sheets and build it and trim and then take white and build it and trim until you build out the corner. And in that way, you will use more like exactly the amount of clay that you, that you need for that. Okay, I decided to make a slab. And because I made a slab, I got this waste. However, I will turn this black again. Okay, so this is my leftover black and white. So I'm going to take this white and I'm going to make a bullseye cane. I'm gonna wrap, 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 wrap. But last time I ended up with dots that were pretty big. So I want to reduce the size of the dot. So I'm going to reduce the size of the white that I'm using, and I'm going to wrap all of this black around it. So I will be back. Okay, so you can see there's a space there that needs to be filled, and there's a space here that needs to be filled. So I might as well do that now. Taking this clay, my black clay, and this has been rolled through setting three, but you're going to just roll it through whatever setting to fill the space. Like so. And then I'm going to trim about right there. And eliminate that and just kind of try to pull it over like so. Okay, now that also reduced the size of the space that needs to be filled. So here is my bullseye, and this is enough clay to fill this space and this space. I can just tell it is. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start reducing it down, and then I will directly apply it to the corners to fill them in. And then we will examine and see if I need to put any more clay any place or if I need to trim any away. So I will be back. All right, so I reduced this out to about this size. And what I'm gonna do is start putting this on. And I will put four on this side, like so. And now let's put four on this side. And uh, last time I didn't work them at the same time. And I think that was also a mistake on my part. It's much easier to keep them more uniform if you work on both corners instead of working on one and then trying to reproduce what you did on the second. This is, I think this is going to work out much better. Like so. Okay, let's reduce some more and then work on the next row.
I'm going to make this, these, excuse me, these two rows a little bit smaller. Smaller yet. So let's see what's cooking. Now, when you work this way, I'm starting to make an equilateral triangle. If I put one more there, it would be an equilateral triangle. That's not what we want. That's not this uh, this shape exactly, is it? I don't know what it is. Is that an isosceles triangle? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start trying to reshape it in the shape I want, which is to flatten this side out a bit, like so. I'm not finished putting them on, but this happened the last time too, it started growing out funny. So it's probably best to correct, make these small corrections now and then I will continue filling in and I will probably reduce more. This side is a little bit larger or I maybe I rolled the snakes out a tiny bit larger. So now begin the process of sort of filling it in. And for this purpose, it might be helpful to kind of reduce the size of the snakes even more. See, I have to fit that. I have to fill in that space. That space there. Maybe this on this side. This little space. Maybe I'll fill in here on the side. Let me do the other side, the opposite. Right in there. Let me flatten these that I just put on and see how much more space I need to fill. That was my problem last time though. The corners were too small. They were just flat out too small. And these corners look too small to me again. Okay, so what I could do is I could put a sheet of black around and then trim, which might be the best thing to do. Let me see how much black I have left. Not very much. This is about the extent of it. But let me see. I think I can get it done. just make it big enough to cover the corner.
what I'm hoping to do with this series too. People ask me all the time, how much clay did you use? And I think I've explained this to you before, but since I never really worry much about not having enough clay, um, I, I don't pay that much attention to it. But I know that you guys, uh, you don't have this, this wonderful situation I have where I don't really have to worry about it. So I'm going to be trying very hard to be a little more cognizant of the fact that you need to know how much clay something like these canes I'm making require because whereas I will not be running out of clay, you certainly may. So in terms of, you know, clay use and, and clay needs, I find that, of course, I use a ton of black. But having black out really helps because you can make black out of virtually anything you have. I don't use quite as much white, but white is something you can't really make, so you've got to have enough of it. You can't make it. But it's the other colors, probably. I, I, I think I will. You don't want to run out of the colors that are required to make these, for instance. So I will try to be, as I said, more aware of what you need and tell you what I'm using. Okay, so now I've covered the corners, but you can see now the these two corners are larger, these two corners are small, and I need to actually cut this into a nice, even rectangle. If I start pushing down and reducing at this point, you guys know what happens. These two sides are gonna pooch out this side may suck in. The clay moves where it's going to move, not where I want it to move. And so the only way for me to ensure that these sides are straight and don't pouch out is to start with the right amount of clay in position then move on to proper reduction. Not getting lazy when I say, I'm tired, I don't want to do this anymore. No, I have to be. I have to grow up and I have to just do things, do it right. All right, so what I have to do is I have to start cutting to make this that nice, even rectangle that we need to start with. Let me just lay that flat straight there, right in the middle. So I know I have to cut this. I'm gonna have to cut there. Okay. Let's repeat, do it on this side. Okay, from there to there. Okay, let's give it a go. will probably be cutting more. I will have to be cutting a bit more. That's okay. Just gonna take my time and do it 
best I can. Okay, I do have some spaces here. Spaces can be problematic. I have some here as well. I will address those after I finish cutting. Okay, so I think I'm just going to slice some of this away that I know is just too much right there. I know it is. I know it is. Space, and I have this huge space here. See, huge. So at this point, I'm just going to fill it up. Huge. My goodness, that was a big space. Huge. Okay, I predict there's going to be another huge space over here, too. Oh, not so huge. Oh, huge. That's the bad thing about the dots and the good thing about the stripes. No spaces in the stripes. And I know there are more spaces deep down inside. There, have, there has to be. But I'm uh, just going to address these on the outside. I think maybe these are the largest ones. The biggest ones are out here. Okay, so let me continue cutting. Any place where I see that there's too much clay, I'm just going to cut it away. Any place I see where there's a big gap like in here, I'm just going to put some clay in. But I don't think you have to watch the rest of this process. So I will be back. Okay, so what I've done here is I just tried to compress the corner with the snakes. You can see, see how much it shrunk back? Well, that's because I pushed all the air out. So now it's too small. Now on this corner, I built it up with more clay. And I could do the same thing here. Just take black and build it up and make it larger. Or, or I can cut it away. And you know what? That I think is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this edge. I'm going to cut some along here and here and here. And the pattern, this pattern, will get larger, and the dots and the stripes will get smaller, but I think I'll like it better. So that's what I'm going to do. So I cut away this side and this side. All right. So I realized I should probably just do it in front of you. So now I'm going to cut this side and this side. Just make them smaller. Now 
let's cut this side. This looks like it's sticking out a little farther. Just a touch. This looks good, this looks good. So now I'm going to start reducing. And I am going to pay extra attention to this shape. I have a tendency when I'm reducing like this to make everything square because it is easier to do. But this time I'm going to try to maintain the rectangle. Okay. awfully sloppy there. What did I do? Oh, this is the side that I put the extra sheet on. Oh, well. I just want the sides to be, these sides to be as straight as they can be. I totally lost it on the last one. And I have to be able to do it better. That copper is very soft. If I can't control the amount that that copper is moving out, what will happen? Of course, the pattern will have a lot less copper in it. That side of the cane will be much smaller. So I have to try to keep these two colors moving at the same rate. It's getting tough because look, see it's pooching out. Feels good though. It feels like it's nice and soft inside. All right, so I will continue working like this, trying to maintain the rectangle as opposed to pushing it into a square for speed because it's faster. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm still working on this and I have reduced it out. Not quite uh, twice the original length, but you can see that the copper wants to move faster than that or orangey gold 
here it's more pronounced you can see that so at this point I'm still doing a lot of pushing the clay down to my work surface pushing on the base like this in an effort to control the amount that that copper moves and hopefully to give the other color a chance to catch up. But it is quite a bit uh, softer, as I commented about before. If I just grab the ends and start pulling, there'll be a lot more of that orangey gold color than the copper because the copper will just move. So at this point, I'm just trying to control one and encourage the other to move. And attaching it or pushing it down to my uh, my marble work surface is definitely helping. Now I might be able to start stretching, pulling up a bit like so. Here, let me move that just a, a tad. And I will continue to do this until I feel that I have a good grip on the ends and the inside will just stretch. You know what? It, it is feeling that way now. Boy, that orangey gold is just hanging back. And the copper, the copper's ready to shoot out. The white is actually pretty soft, so I don't think we're going to leave much of it behind. At least on that end. And uh, the corners are not moving too fast either. Because that can definitely be a problem. And it, it was the problem I experienced last time. The corners got lost. When the corners uh, kind of disappeared, then I got all that distortion in the pattern shape. Okay, so I'm just going to continue every now and then. Da, da, da. Like so. Quite really soft. Okay, so let me continue and I'll be back at the next phase. Okay, so I'm going to start stretching the cane out, but I'm not going to grip the ends and pull. I'm going to try to try to stretch the center section by just gripping. You can see how I'm just gripping the end and pulling. And you know what? I'm I'm not really digging my fingers into the clay. I'm just sort of trying to stretch it out like so. But almost like trying not to leave fingerprints, just kind of pulling it and pulling and pulling them on the middle section. That's kind of where I'm concentrating right now is in this section, not on the ends. Trying to pull the middle of the pattern out. And it feels really good. You, you'll know when the clay is soft enough and elastic enough to move with you. The worst thing is feeling something hard inside because then you know you're just going to have a lot of cracking 
internally and a lot of distortion in the pattern. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my time and try to stretch. Just try to stretch it out. I think every now and then it's probably a good idea to address the ends again. So that as you're reducing, you don't just pull out the corners. keep doing that just pulling the center area like that and it's starting to move a lot faster now and then every now and then just pop it on the bottom and doo -doo 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 -doo, and then the other side like so And roll to restore the corners. And grip and start pulling again. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing this. I will be back. Okay, now I think it's time to plug the ends. And when I do that, I just take it down and I try to make it. Small on the ends. I don't always do this, but this seems to be appropriate at this moment. Okay. The theory is that, at least I think, you make the small, you plug the ends, then you work on getting the middle area, the bulge, to catch up to the ends. And I think that when you do this, it also helps a situation like this. It keeps the clay from just sort of uncontrollably moving like the clay in here. I'm essentially plugging the end like so. And then the clay in here is less likely to move uncontrollably. Now, this hand looks a little wonky. I'm hoping it's not, that it's just the end, that I can straighten it out. Deal with the bulge a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna start pulling on the middle. Okay, so I'm going to keep working on thinning this area out now. Gripping the ends and pulling, and every now and then slamming it down and trying to plug the ends again. Try to control the movement of the clay inside. This probably helps too, just taking my palms sort of running them up the sides like so. Okay, so I will be back. Okay, so I reduced it out some. So I could reduce it out more. It's, it's rather large, but I'm going to stop. And let's take a look at what we have inside. Starting at the ends. Hopefully, this one will be better. Okay, there's one end. You know what? It is better. The other was rounder. It is better. Okay, let me cut a little more till I get that white around the square. And you know, it is better than the other one, but it could be better still, I believe, if I took this and I flattened it more like so. So that's what I'm going to do to this. Just flatten it some more and see. Now, of course, the pattern is better in the middle, too. These are the ends. So let me cut the middle because I may just reshape each piece. Okay, so this is uh, approximately six inches. And here we have approximately three and approximately three there. Okay, so that is much, much better than this one. Where is it? I put it away. But it is a much better, more true. It's more true than this. See how these got so round? They're very round. So this is actually better. Not exact but um i'll take it i'll take it i'm gonna flatten this one out a bit
this is the end. Shorter. All right, so that I think is much better than this one. This one got totally wonky. If you look at these lines, they're running, they're angled, everything is like, so this is a much better cane than this one is. So I'm glad I did it again. Now, let us just smooth the sides. Okay. And there's the cane, and I can reduce it down um, and to the side that I, to the size that I want to use. All right, so that's this cane. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do for number five, but we shall see. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until we meet again, I'm Donna Cato. Bye.